Welcome everyone to the fourth week of the Business Management Capstone class. During this video, I'll be covering the assignments that you will be working on this week and the results from Globus from last week. As always, I post a weekly announcement. Let's go ahead and click on the weekly modules content area on the left hand side. I'm going to click on the week four chapter two folder. As stated in previous videos, we have the same structure. We will always begin with the learning objectives for that week. Then the assignment summary, which will be obviously watching this video. Reviewing Chapter 2, reviewing the PowerPoint for Chapter 2, uh, reviewing the Learn Smart documentation, the uh, student quick tips and best practices if you have not done so at all already. And for the assignments, you will have your course participation uh, discussion board, which is on collaboration. The Chapter 2 Learn Smart, the Globus Decision for Year 6, a Globus Year 6 Report, which is new, which I will cover, and the quiz for Chapter 2. So let me go ahead and scroll down. Here we have the Module 4 Course Content Information, which is your PowerPoint for Chapter 2, the Key Financial Ratios, the Learn Smart Information, and the Globus Simulation Documentation. Next, we have the Course Participation Collaboration Discussion Board. By this point, teams may be struggling with collaboration among their team members. Well, that's why I have this assignment. To give everyone a chance to review some videos and to determine is really the collaboration issue within yourself, within your team members, or maybe both. Uh, so the goal here is within step one, you should review at least several of these videos, if not all, if you have an opportunity. In step two, you want to provide an initial post within the discussion board for these questions, such as what area of collaboration do you feel that you need to improve most? What was the biggest takeaway from the videos? What did you learn uh, that may assist with your team being successful this semester? What collaboration tools will be used uh, to make your virtual team more effective? And if your team is currently struggling with communication, how can you improve this situation? And then, of course, step three, once you create your initial post, you must make a comment on at least two other posts. Which from last week's discussion board, it seemed like everyone did a great job with uh, their comments. Uh, they were detailed. They weren't just great job. I agree. So uh, keep it up. So moving on, we have the chapter two, Learn Smart. You'll be reading the e-text and answer questions as you go along. Then you want to complete the Chapter 2 quiz. And next, what we have is the Global Simulation Year 6 Report. I highly suggest to complete the Year 6 Report before completing the Year 6 Decisions. Now, that's not saying that you cannot just go ahead and start working on the decisions. Yes, of course, you may, but I think it's very helpful if you complete the year six report first, because then you can kind of have a guide to go by to make your decision off of. So the reason why we're doing the year, the yearly reports now, starting with year six all the way through 15, is I want you to start analyzing your decisions, not just simply making them. Anybody can go and make decisions and you might get lucky and you might do decent and, and you know, maybe not last place, but maybe you're seventh or eighth and and just kind of treading water. Well, I want to make sure every team is understanding uh, their strategy, the outcome of that strategy. So each week you will have a yearly report. As you can see, there is a rubric that goes along with it, so you can review that um, if you have any questions with the point system. So we have questions such as within this yearly report is, where are you now? Is your company in good, average, or weak competitive position? The next one's like, where do we want to go? What goals do you have for your company? So on and so forth. And the last category is, how are you going to get there? And it has some sub questions within there. So this is what I want to stress about the yearly report. Like the title says, it's a report. It's not Q and A, meaning that you don't just answer these questions one by one saying, okay, the very first one says, where are we now? And you type on your paper, where are we now? Question mark. And your answer is, we're doing pretty good, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, that's not really a report. That's just Q&A. Because then th the next thing you would do is just put, okay, well, uh, does your company appear to be in sound financial condition? Question mark. And then you would just answer that. That's not a report. A report would basically be able to answer all these questions within more of a paragraph format than just a Q&A question and answer. 
last semester, it took most teams a, a while to kind of grasp that concept. Keep in mind, it just it should be a report, meaning that I should be able to just read the report, and within that report, I would find the answers to all these questions. The report should be professional. You know, it should have a nice uh, cover page uh, within the, the report. The report just should look professional all the way around, from the first page to the last page. I would say I probably stress more of the look of the report as I'm grading than almost the content within it. I really want everyone to get used to creating really nice reports. So if you say, well, do you have examples? Yeah, I have tons of them from last semester that I'm not showing you because I don't want, I want, I don't want you to just copy the examples. That's not good. It's a very easy concept. You, you will be answering these questions within a report, not just putting the question and then the answer to each one. Okay. So uh, I think it'll probably take you a few weeks to get the hang of it. Now, with that said, every team that made a good attempt last semester, they did well on each each report. And I just would make comments like, you know, I want to see this next time. I want to see that next time. So don't be fearful of, okay, you're going to get a 50 on this first report. No, if you do a great effort, nice cover page, every page within the document looks professional. You address, or I should say, you answer all these questions within your report, then you're good. Should be no big deal. And then, of course, I only need one team member from each team to submit it within the Global Simulation Year 6 report link. And then, last but not least, then we have the Global Simulation Year 6 decisions, which um, hopefully by now everyone's well aware of how to accomplish this. Make sure you're working with your teams. I've had a lot of great questions via email and telephone and Adobe Connect sessions, so keep that up. Don't hesitate to reach out. Now let's take a look at the Practice Year 7 scoreboard. At quick glance, you would think I would highlight Company D because they are still number one. They gained one from last year. Their weighted score is 108 for Year 7, and you would think that's what I would focus on. Well, that's the obvious. Yeah, they're doing great, and I give it to them. But what I would say is look at the very bottom of the list, Company F. You say, well, why would I look at the bottom? They're at weighted average score of 78. Look at the change from year 6 to year 7, a plus 31 change. That has to be one of the biggest change I've ever seen within a simulation. So what that tells me is if we were continuing with the practice years, they would easily pass Company C next year and maybe even Company B and really be fighting for a top spot. Now, the great part for Company F is, is we're starting all over this week with the true year six. So whatever mistakes they made initially with year six and they corrected within year seven, now they're starting fresh, as is everyone. So Company D, E, and A, and even B, you've been pretty successful up top, but now we're starting all over again with the true year six. So it's anyone's game right now this week. What I would tell every team is watch out for Company F Falcon Focus. Just to share some information with you, two of their team members are supply chain management students. And looks like they're going to make a run for the top once we start this week, true year six. If I scroll down to the game to date scoreboard, of course, obviously, Company D is still up the top. Great job. I don't want to take anything away from them. Um, but tremendous effort, you know, clear, clearly you won the practice rounds with a game to date overall score of 109. And then you have Team E, which is right behind them at 94, and then A at 89, and then B at 87. And then you had Team C and F, one at 81 at 76. But with that said, that doesn't really de depict a true vision of Team F because really they should be at least in the middle of the pack right now. But then again, we're starting fresh this week. So we're going to see what happens. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more reports. Okay, earnings per share. It looks like four out of 16 met expectation. Company D was the best in show with 6.47. But then what I look for when I'm trying to analyze if a team is on the right track or not is did you increase? So even Company C, they went 122 to 172. Fantastic. 
and company F went to 51 to 1.57. Tremendous. Next, we have return on equity. Every team met expectations on return on equity. Obviously, company D was best in industry at 55.3, but you don't have to be best in industry in any of these categories to become number one in simulation. It helps, but it's not required. Keep that in mind. Stock price. Again, what can I say? Everyone met expectation. Company D still best in industry at 212. But here's where I go back to say, let's look at year six to year seven to see the different jumps. So if you look at company B, they actually went down a few points. But that's okay because they're still meeting expectations. Company C went up, of course. Company E almost doubled. And then uh, couple, company F went almost eight times fold. So great job, everyone. I'm, I'm very excited to get to this week, the true year six, and see the results of the, the simulation. Next, we have the credit rating. As stated in previous videos, usually it's pretty easy for teams to get up to the A or A minus or A plus credit rating. And what you already have, company F made the biggest jump from B minus to A minus. So great job. Image trading. Everyone met expectations except company E and they actually had a dip from 69 to 57. So watch out for that company E because you at least want to meet expectations or, or be very close to them. Company D is the best in the industry at 82. So everyone keep up the great work. Moving on to the competitive intelligence report. Keep in mind one thing I glossed over last week is you are selling within different regions. So if up very top, if you click, you're going to see North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Pacific, and Latin America. So you have to make your changes in each region, not just North America. I just focus on North America to try to give you a gist of what you should be looking for. Okay, so the price for the camera, the average is 329. We have a high of 500. So look at that gap. It goes from 225 to 500. So at first glance, you would think, well, company E's not going to make any money at 500. They don't even have best PQ rating. They have 4.3. And when it comes to the brand reputation, they're at 69. So it looks like the second to the lowest. They do have four different models. So that might be helping them out. But then if you go all the way down to gain and loss, they're up 1.7. It's not a big number, but they're up. So clearly they don't have to sell as many because they're higher priced. But you have to watch that. Now, on the reverse end, if you go way back to top and look at company C, they're selling for 225. They have a PQ rating of 4.6, which is better than company E. They only have two models. So you would say to yourself, well, I bet you they're doing fantastic. Because if you look at the demand for ACC units compared to company E, so you see 350, but keep in mind, that's in thousands. And, and you have 350,000 for company C versus 114,000 for company E. Company E made a profit. Company C lost almost 20%. Okay, so big difference, right? So just because you're selling it cheap, you can't sell it so cheap to your detriment. So keep that in mind. And then you see the market share. Company C had the highest. Makes sense if you're selling it so cheap that you're losing money. I'd buy one from you too. Company F actually had 19% of the market share. And they sold almost 300,000 units. So it looks like they're on something. Let me go ahead and scroll down to the drone segment. So the average price of the drones is 1608. The highest is company A at 2000. So let's see. Let's step through it. They're at 5.5 PQ rating. The brand reputation is 66. Number of models of two. So with the PQ rating of 5.5, they're saying to the customers, they demand a higher price. And let's see. Their gain and loss is 0.6. So they're not doing tremendous, but they're not losing money. But let's see the flip side, company C. They're at 1100, which is by far the cheapest. 4.1 PQ rating, 
it's not not that bad. Selling two models, but then if you look down below, the gain and loss is almost three. The market share, they don't have the highest actually. Company D has the highest at 20.9. So company D is selling at $1,550 and at 0.7 for gain loss at almost 21% market share. Now, if you look farther, company F is at $1,250, 4.4 PQ rating, and same with that at 0.7 at 19.4 market share. So hopefully this overview will give you information to carry on within the true year six. I won't detail it out as much in future videos because I don't want to give away anyone's strategy. It's up to each team to dig through these reports. If you do, you definitely be, will be successful determining what your competition is up to. As always, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a great week.